viewers, welcome to ETV Bharat. Today we are joined in by our India's former High Commissioner to Pakistan and also former spokesperson to Prime Minister's office when Indian armed was deployed in Sri Lanka, uh, Ambassador G. Parthasarthi. Hello, sir. Welcome to ETV Bharat. Thank uh, you. And of course, as we see, there has been a slew of uh, of, of of various foreign visits to India and how India has been. Uh, outreaching diplomatically to mm. various countries and now of course uh, Sri Lanka's president Ranil Vikramasinghe will be here in Delhi today. Uh, how do you see this visit given the fact that New Delhi is concerned when it comes to Chinese influence on this strategically uh, located island? Well, uh, to come to recent times, uh, the fact of the matter is that Sri Lanka was moving more and more into the arms of the Chinese and that caused us concern especially when the Chinese had control of ports in, like Colombo and Hambantota. Uh, and uh, the, the efforts really picked up when External Affairs Minister Jai Shankar was in Sri Lanka when I was dealing with Sri Lanka. Right. Uh, the, he, he, he took a keen interest and uh, we managed to turn the tables when Sri Lanka's economy was collapsing, the Chinese did nothing. All that they wanted was the ports, offering them high interest loans and taking them into what we call as a debt trap, totally beholden to the Chinese. Uh, and at that time, when the financial crisis broke, they came to India. And uh, I think Prime Minister Modi reacted very positively because the economy was collapsing, the democracy was falling apart with riots. Mm. Their predecessors, the Rajapaksha family, who ruled the country virtually, were forced out by the people and had to take ref refuge abroad. So at, at that point in time, India stepped in with assisting them with about $4 billion yes, to enable them to balance payments, manage affairs. We also lobbied with, for them mm. very hard in Washington, uh, particularly with the World Bank and the IMF, and stabilized the position for them. Now, the Chinese, of course, remained a factor, but interestingly, in recent years, for example, Hamban Tota port was totally handed over to the Chinese. It's now mortgaged to the Chinese, and the Chinese can use that port in uh, southwestern Sri Lanka. Mm. So uh, the fact is, we did not want that to be repeated, and uh, we have moved in in a way which gave us a presence there. And also, we found that people were getting a bit tired. I had been there in Sri Lanka because I'm a member of the. India Sri Lanka Foundation and a few months ago I found a certain disenchantment with China and therefore we've built on it apart from the aid and getting them the assistance from the IMF mm -hmm. <coughs> we've also moved ahead with <coughs> offering projects in the country and that will be now followed up in the coming months so uh, at the time of crisis when they were collapsed, the governor, the prime minister, the president, the prime minister had to flee from Sri Lanka, the mm -hmm. Rajapaksha. Uh, we stepped in with the uh, present president, and uh, that has helped us out in the sense that there is better understanding. They are more sensitive when we express concerns about. They are handing over certain parts of the island to, to the Chinese, more so if they are close to our ports and close to the Indian shores. So uh, I think what Mr. Rajapaksha, uh, the, what uh, President Vikram Singh will want here is to discuss matters economic. And certainly uh, India is open to and have opened a line of credit also. Yeah to giving them assistance. <coughs> and on the military, uh, uh, geopolitical side, we work closely with Japan. 
So it's Chinese resource is not competing against India. Okay. It's against India and Japan, which is formidable. In Sri Lanka. You In Sri say. Lanka. Yeah. So uh, that has helped. I mean, for example, their effort to get full control of Colombo, they failed. We have our presence there. Their efforts to get too close to our shores has not worked out. And I don't think we are going to allow them to get into Trincomalee. So you mean to say, is it the ground reality or, of course, uh, the fact that Sri Lanka is still dependent on China, for that matter, that it is the country's yeah. largest uh, yeah. bilateral creditor? Yeah, but Sri Lanka now has the position to tell them that you can't push us around, we have bargaining chips, mm. which are India and Japan. And, of course, the Americans and others uh, are there, the World Bank is there. And uh, the keys to the World Bank and the IMF is with, are with the Americans. Mm -hmm. So I think it's it's a it's a it's a it's a full-fledged diplomatic move, mm -hmm. with India as the center, okay. because we are the ones who are doing the running, who are establishing the contacts, spreading the word, and uh, it's not something the Chinese are going to relish, especially as the extremely pro-Chinese. The Rajapaksa family find themselves totally politically isolated within the country. And um, President Vikramasinghe is an old politician we've dealt with for years, mm -hmm. very mature, very balanced. Right. And I think his visit here mm. is really to how to carry this process forward. Of course, we'll work it bilaterally, but the advantage we have on this side is we have the project assistance ready with the Japanese, should we need Japanese to come in. Mm. And uh, the Americans are there to push the World Bank and IMF. So can you elaborate on how the Japan uh, Japan is playing a role, of course, when it comes to Project, the crisis? Projects. The projects. Yeah. Projects and money. Uh, and the, the, the generally, we cooperate closely with Japan. Japan, yeah. And Japan is really the largest aid giver. China doesn't give a cent of aid. So it's where all does, credits. Uh, where, where does exactly India stand between all this? Uh, you know, of course, when you talk about uh, this, uh, since China's influence, mm -hmm. and of course, Jap Japan stepping in, mm -hmm. Chi of course, India uh, executing the plan, mm -hmm. of course, mm -hmm. and helping Sri Lanka out of to deal with this crisis. Out of what I call as a debt trap. I mean, where they landed in real trouble was a port called Humban Tota, mm -hmm. which they should never have built except that it was in the president's constituency and he wanted it. Mm -hmm. It was not exactly a port with a huge amount of traffic flows. It was in the southwest coast of, of Sri Lanka. And Humban Tota landed Sri Lanka in a mess. And that is what I call a debt trap. They mm -hmm. found themselves unable to repay the cost and force Sri Lanka to hand over that port almost virtually for management. Mm. So um, that's the game the Chinese play, but it also does not go down well with the recipient. Yeah. So the Sri Lankans are not going to be totally dependent on India. They would not like to be. We've had the double problems in the yeah, past. Absolutely. But that is receding. When I was there last time, with the f three or four months ago, uh, both the Indian Tamils, as we call them, who went there in the 19th century, and the native Sri Lankan Tamil who's been there for centuries, were making their peace with the government. And I was particularly happy to see that the Indian Tamils, mm. who went there almost at indentured labor for the tea plantations mm. during British rule, they are appreciating the Indian role. Mm. So the earlier factor of Tamil Nadu you know, getting concerned that we're not doing enough, that's behind us. Mm. Also, we've opened out our schools and so on for their Tamil children to come so and study. So you mean study. that that, resolve, that issue has been resolved now, or maybe we can see a discussion this time when uh, the president will be here? It will be done in passing, because this is no longer the major issue. Mm. Uh, it's really uh, something by way of, uh, you know, if they want us to help out, as we have done mm. in housing for the the unsettled Tamils. We did it in a big way. A couple of hundred thousand houses were built. So um, I think that will continue. So you're having an integrated policy, but never underestimate the Chinese. Mm. Um, 
they work uh, behind the scenes. They build up their own political assets. As I said, uh, in his though in their last years, both the Rajapaksha brothers mm. leaned towards India. Yeah. yeah. Well, their uh, reality was towards India, mm. but uh, one could not say their hearts were in the same direction. Right. So yeah. So of course now uh, we have seen how the world is facing the geopolitical uncertainties mm. ri rising out of the Ukraine conflict, of mm. course. And uh, how do you see uh, the relationship going further between India and Sri Lanka? Especially the China factor is also one reason. And also the China the factor will always be there. Mm. But uh, I think what they have found is that the Chinese projects are mercantilist. Like, for example, building a port which had no conceivable use and then taking over that port to administer it as was per the terms of the agreement. I think these are the lessons people will learn, mm. not to rush into such projects. But the advantage of China is they have oodles of money to spend. Mm. In fact, they have a surplus because they finished all the construction they wanted in China, so it goes abroad. And uh, that is going to continue. Right. And of course, now we talk about uh, the situation in Pakistan, of course, we could see a similar kind of a situation, mm -hmm. uh, right? Pakistan is also reeling under economic mm -hmm. crisis and we, of course, somewhere or the other, it is expected that India should be uh, there to bail it out, mm -hmm. uh, but it's not the same. Our relation is not the same. What is the, what is, what is the situation? You see, the, the, the Pakistanis, and I've lived six years there and a lot of friends there. Mm. Their establishment f believes that they'd rather die than ask India for assistance. It's, that is the depth of the feeling. They will not. It, it would, if most of the elite, especially the military, mm. would feel that they are demeaning their very existence if they turn to India. Don't forget, Sri Lanka was a separate island, though the people there came from different parts of India, whether it was uh, Tamil Nadu or Kerala or Orissa. But Pakistan regards itself as being separate and more linked to the Islamic world on its, mm. east, on its uh, west. So that day won't come when they will ask India. The answer is no. Um, call it false pride, call it real, realism or whatever. But as a diplomat, one has to go by the reality. So in the case of Pakistan, uh, they, are, they are, may cool off a bit on terrorism for a number of reasons, mm. but uh, it's not going to be the same as Sri Lanka. Right. And uh, yes, we keep trying. Uh, Dr. Manmohan Singh made an effort with made some progress on Jammu and Kashmir. But right now, Pakistan is not in a mood to do anything. They are so utterly broke yeah. that they're looking with starry eyes, gazing at the International Monetary Fund, mm -hmm. the Chinese, the uh, Saudi Arabia, UAE. Uh, strangely, China has not chipped in with a lot of cash, which again proves that it wants a present. The other thing you have to bear in mind is the military. Mm. Bulk of the arms of Pakistan are basically of Chinese origin. And uh, even their nuclear weapons and missiles are of Chinese design. Right. So um, that is a relationship which is quite on its own. Because Pakistan is a convenient tool mm to keep India occupied for China. So that's a reality. We have seen the recent SCO document where there, there of course, the other countries have, uh, uh, because India stepped out of not supporting China's project, the BRI project, mm -hmm. of course, mm -hmm. and the other countries like Russia and other SCO members has actually, uh, you know, approved it, or China has, India has not. Uh, These are all dramatics. Mm -hmm. 
as long as our relationship with Putin How do you see the relation between India and Pakistan for that matter in this case? Right now, you can't see it in any way because they're in a mess. Mm. They're heading for elections, mm. which will have by November. Mm. It's, it's going to be uncertain. So nothing is going to move. Mm. And they also know that they are in a situation where if they resort to terrorism, mm. we have instruments which we can repay in kind. So they'll be more careful. So there are a lot of debates going on, uh, given the fact that there is a back-channel diplomacy where UAE is also involved uh, to broke, you know, costs. Back-channel diplomacy will continue. It will always continue with Pakistan. In fact, the only time we came close to getting movement forward on Jammu and Kashmir was in Dr. Manmohan Singh's time. Mm. Yeah. So right and now, I'm back-channel. Of course, there will be a back-channel. <laughs> Uh, I mean, there will uh, be no talks like that. Uh, uh, I can't like see formal talks because mm -hmm. they're heading for elections. What talks are they going to have with us? And they are completely by November, and it's a, such a messy process mm -hmm. that God alone knows how it end. But uh, uh, so I, I would sit back and relax, and uh, because they know uh, in Mr. Modi's India terrorism. Mm -hmm will find its own answers from India, mm. of India's choosing. Right. Okay, my last question, of course, uh, would be on this visit, on uh, Sri Lankan President's visit. How do, how do you see how significant is this visit and how the international community is watching it? Because uh, this is a time, is very cr a crucial time, and the country itself is suffering from a uh, crisis, and the President look, will be here uh, just uh, after assuming look, office. Uh, and what yes, can we expect? He, look, uh, one is known President Vikram Singh for a long time. Wow. He is one of those very mature politicians of Sri Lanka, who's also very balanced. Mm. So he got himself elected in difficult circumstances when the Rajapaksis fled away from the country. Mm. So um, I, I think as long as he's there, uh, there will be uh, a steady movement forward. Mm. Uh, they will be very careful in yielding to Chinese presence on any games mm. which affect India. I think they have learnt their lessons in uh, the port, uh, which they've had to mortgage. And uh, I, I, th I, th I think it's quite manageable. We, there's nothing imminent which we need worry about. But that shouldn't stop us from going ahead with a lot of a number of our economic projects. And I think that is the major subject of discussion. Well, when uh, will be when uh, President Vikram is here. And also, of course, we talk about uh, India's, uh, sorry, of course, China's growing aggression in the Indo-Pacific and the countries coming together to counter it, of course. We see the West, then we see the U.S. Uh, how do you see in that, of course, the growing time? Of course, we will India biasly say we're doing nothing. But that's as Pakistan, as uh, pious as Pakistan saying uh, that they're uh, not receiving Chinese assistance. Hmm. Uh, the uh, fact is, we will continue to work with the U.S. Uh -huh. We will continue to work with the Quad. We will continue to work with what we call as I2U2. Yeah. So, yeah, sure. Because I think this old belief that I'm not going to join others and I'm going to be a holy other than thou is beyond, uh, behind us now. Hmm. Right, sir. And your last opinion on uh, this entire India-China broader issue, border issue that we are still uh, struggling to come to a conclusion? or It's not going to end in a hurry. Hmm. Uh, China is hell-bent on uh, con com, uh, sort of uh, uh, keeping uh, India's uh, rise within proportions which they fit satisfied with. Uh, we'll have to see if Xi Jinping is willing to change his mind. Mm. I don't see him willing to do so. So I think we have to be prepared for Chinese adventurism like we had in Ladakh. But then you saw what they tried it in Arunachal last year. Yeah. They were not particularly successful. Right. 
Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Thank you. And giving your time.